All right, hopefully this is the last one of these automatic strife videos that I have to put up. Um, I'm still getting questions and different scenarios. So this is, um, I guess this will be helpful to some people. This is mostly gonna be for first time modders or uh, people that don't want to completely gut the shell of their strife for whatever reason. Um, it could be that you maybe don't have the power tools. Uh, maybe you don't want to work with the lithium polymer batteries because you're worried about working with high current batteries. So for kids, obviously. So the safer option other than your standard alkaline batteries is you can use nickel metal hydride batteries, which um, are actually slightly lower in voltage than alkaline. The main advantage of that is the rechargeability. Uh, the common go-to for a lot of people is they'll use don't use truss fires. You want to use um, IMR batteries. So these are higher current output than regular uh, lithium ion batteries. And we're only going to be using two cells here because again, we're using the stock wiring loom here down to the thermistor. We're not even going to bypass the thermistor. And you're going to use a couple of dummy cells to fill the tray. So we'll outline here what's actually been changed on this blaster and it's very, very little. In fact, the only bit of shell material that's been cut is the little teeny line tab in here that's been removed so that we can fit this recycled switch from uh, from another Nerf blaster. And you can see that it's just been mounted in there with a little bit of hot glue. You can use um, epoxy resin. Uh, you can use polyplastic. Uh, any type of solid type of glue will hold that in there because the shell naturally has a subtle U shape which kind of holds it in place anyway. But you need to have that lined up properly to get this point of contact here and here. Now, because we didn't replace the stock switch with a micro switch, we still have this stock switch here, and we have, more importantly, the stock block. And because these, in order, in order of keeping this, uh, this circuit as simple as possible, these switches are not wired sequentially, which means that this can activate by itself. Normally, when you do it sequentially, this will not activate by itself unless if the switch is closed. All right. So with our recycled switch, we have two leads, our common and our normally open. Those are both going to be positive on the positive line. So we're going to have the common going to the positive lead of our motor. And the other positive on your normally open is going to go to the positive terminal of the battery tray. The negative terminal is going to have a wire here. This is not going through the thermistor. It's directly to the negative terminal tab is going to go directly to the negative terminal of your pusher motor. So that is only four soldering joints. Again, this is simpler than rewiring a strife for um, alternate battery source, or for additional, for changing the motors out. Um, in terms of functionality, it's a stock strife. All right. Trigger won't engage unless if the rev trigger engages the physical mechanism. And then from there, let's see if we can do this without getting the uh, motor cage to pop out. Hmm. Alignment's a little bit off. Let's, there we go. The alignment will be uh, proper when the shell halves are bolted together. But let's try that one more time. So, you can see we got good alignment here. We just need to make sure that this is clamped in place, which is gonna happen when we put the shell on. But uh, there you have it. That's four soldering joints, and I do not believe it is physically possible to get this auto pusher in there um, faster or easier. Again, this is like a five, 10 minute job once you've got all the parts in place. Um, we'll check the performance in a bit, and uh, I'm going to say rate of fire on this. I used a different, I used two different motors, other than before I went back to the, the stock strife motor. Uh, one was the one that came with the Arduino gearbox because that's a low speed drone. The fade rate was uh, probably somewhere like maybe four darts, three darts per second, three to four darts per second. It's like a stock rapid strike. And uh, on the FF-130 that I had, which I've used in other Strife builds, the rate of fire on that was so quick that it, it actually stripped the gears. So there are issues with that. These gearboxes are not really meant for 
high speed motors. So if you do that, you have to make sure that everything is aligned perfectly so that the teeth don't partially engage, which can result in teeth getting stripped off of gears. And once you do that, then you pretty much have to junk the whole thing and get a new gearbox. So if you're going to experiment with different torque specs and different motor speeds, I would recommend that you just buy as many of these as you can in group, at least four or more. And that'll save you the trouble of hitting a stop in your work until you wait on more parts. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So we've seen how simple the circuit is. We've seen how it works. The only parts that have been removed is the dart brush because that uh, increased the feed reliability. We've removed the stock arm and the mechanical actuator. And that that's pretty much it. So this is a real quick, simple way of doing it. Again, uh, even if you have moderate soldering skills, you should be able to do this in like 10 minutes. And that's the layout. Again, one last time, positive terminal of your pusher motor. Check polarity to make sure that it's spinning counterclockwise. Positive terminal is going to go to your common on your recycled switch. The normally open is going to go to your positive terminal. So that's going to be your activator for this. All right. And your negative terminal on your pusher motor is going to go to the negative terminal on the battery tray. And again, when you do that, bypass the thermistor. Oh yeah, and the screw on the thermistor, that's been popped out because the uh, gearbox won't fit in there if you don't swing this to the side. You can take it out or you can leave it. Again, the whole point of this is to do it with uh, the minimal amount of work as possible and still get a very functional automatic strife. So next, uh, we'll just check the uh, rate of fire with that stock motor, the stock strife motor, and uh, we'll check the uh, FPS, which I'm guessing will probably be with two IMRs, maybe 85. If you hold it in automatic mode, it'll probably dip to the uh, 70s, but we'll see. We'll go, we'll go test that right now. So some of the problems that I'm having with the feed system here, it's feeding, but you can tell that there are skip steps where you can hear the mechanism actuating, but there is no dart being pushed into flywheels. So that is pointing to an alignment issue, which could be either due to the, um, it could be due to the print of the arm, or it could be due to the alignment that is causing the spur gear to slip on the rack gear. So that is something that can be adjusted. It's just a little bit a uh, little bit annoying more than anything else. But you can tell by the actuations the rate at which it should actually be firing, which is higher than what you're seeing in these test fires. <laughs> 